Well, I had an interesting week. I was supposed to get ready for a little carcinoma that they were going to take off, but they ended up taking off a lot more than I bargained for. So, uh, so now I have to see a reconstruction person because I have a big chunk they kept cutting and cutting and cutting. You saw the picture, right? How'd it look? Yeah, it looks deplorable. It's, uh, scary. So, uh, but the thing is, you know, when I was coming home Wednesday, um, I was just going to, uh, to have a night with my family and just have a night of praising the Lord, no matter what happened. And then I get home and there's an ambulance in front of my house. And Max, who had an osteochondral defect, what that is is that your femur, your thigh bone, just didn't grow. And so your cartilage and bone just flies off. And it's incredibly painful. It just, it just hangs there and it's, it's incredibly painful. So he went through that surgery, which nobody would do. Nobody could do it, not even the pediatric surgeons in Emory. It's a very specific surgery. You have to get what's called an allograft which is a, a piece from a cadaver. A 14-year-old boy has to pass away, sadly enough, and, and it's an uphill battle, a lot of therapy and a lot of misery. And we just got through it. And then he was laying there in my driveway with an ambulance, and he has another one. And, um, and then I got a call later that day about a, a good friend of mine who passed away, just out of nowhere, just... This guy was a great guy. I mean, I know people say that. I'm telling you, this guy was an incredible human being. And so when, when these things come at you all at one time, which, which they do, I just ran into somebody today and they, I haven't seen them and they go, Rabbi, my toilet overflowed and we have a little flood in our house. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know whether to say, oh my goodness, what are you going to do? You're going to have to clean the flood, I guess, and maybe replace the rug. That's awful. Let me call up Samuel and tell him, and he'll get all the kids to pray for you because they just want a meal. Do you hear what I'm saying, folks? American believers, do you hear what I'm saying? So when these things um, cave in on you, this is where the rubber meets the road. Anybody can say hallelujah when everything's going well. It's a no-brainer, right? But when these things happen to me, there's a voice. There's a voice and it speaks very loud. It's very jeering. It speaks sarcastically and it mocks me. And it asks me this question. So with all you do and all you've done, where is your God when you need him? Has anybody ever heard that voice? Can I see by a show of hands anybody who's ever heard that voice? Good. If you've never heard that voice, there's a chance that you're really not pressing into the things of the Lord. Maybe, maybe not, but overall, Yeshua heard that voice. Did he? Or, or did I miss something in the scriptures? When he was suffering, did they not say... Aha, aha, where is your God? And did not the buffoon say, the buffoon say, you must be suffering for some sin? How many of you are buffoons who have said that to people in the past? How many buffoons do we have? Without any knowledge, you've said that. You spoke for the Lord when he wasn't speaking through you. My oldest son, my 22-year-old, texted me right away and he said, Dad, I know you. You're going to think, is it something you've done wrong? Is it something you've done right? Is it the enemy? Is it God? He said, listen to me, Dad. It all doesn't matter because in 27 years, you've never got an answer. All that matters is how you deal with it and what you decide to do, if you're going to press into God or not. Maxie looked at me on the floor and I said, Maxie, his... He was in pain, he was crying, and he said, Dad, it's gonna be okay, God's got this. So, 
You get it? You get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? This is where the rubber meets the road, pal. You can have all the pretty little sermons, all the three-point little pretty sermons, and listen to all the pretty little songs. Listen to Chris Tomlin till you're blue in the face. But there's one thing that black and white and rich and poor and Jew and Gentile and American and non have in common, and that's we all understand pain and suffering. And that's what binds us together is not just believers, but as human beings. And the best thing you could do when somebody's suffering, if you have nothing good to say, listen to me. Please, with all due respect, shut up. You don't have to have an answer for them because you don't have one. I never give you an answer. Why is this happening? I don't know. I don't know. But this is what I will tell you. This is my reaction. This is the reaction I try to muster up. Hallelujah. I will wholeheartedly give thanks to the Lord in the council of the upright and in the assembly. The deeds of the Lord are great, greatly desired by all who enjoy them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness continues forever. He has gained renown, that's fame, for his wonders. Adonai is merciful and compassionate. He gives food to those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He shows his people how powerfully he works by giving them the nations as their heritage. The works of his hands are truth and justice all his precepts can be trusted. They have been established forever and ever to be carried out truly and honestly. What are you going to do? You're not going to obey the Lord when things aren't going well? You're going to obey the Lord only when they are going well? Who's your God? I know this, guys. There's only two roads you can take when things aren't going well. And that's the road where you draw closer to God or the road where you run away from God. And I found out in the past, there's one road that's better than the other. You got to figure out which one that is. I'm not answering for you. He sent redemption to his people. He sent redemption. You know what we're here celebrating? Redemption. He sent redemption to his people and decreed that his covenant should last forever. That means he'll never leave us nor forsake us. His name is holy and awesome. The first and foremost point of wisdom is the fear of the Lord and those living by it, those living by reverence for God and reverence for his voice, gain good common sense. You know, sense is the only thing that's not too common today. That means they make right decisions. And last but not least, his praise stands forever. If I don't praise him, somebody else will. And if you don't praise him, the four living creatures are. And the 24 elders are. Wouldn't it be great if we could be louder than them? Wouldn't it be great if the Lord could say, what's going on down there in that podunk town of Macon? There's 600 houses of worship, man. But I don't hear it. You ready? Hmm? Huh? You ready to give him what he deserves? Hmm? Huh? If this is all there is, guys, what what a horrible scenario. If this is, I'm telling you, if this is all there is, what a horrible scenario. I mean, you go to school, you break your back, you study, you sacrifice to get a good job, and then you work, you work, you work, and you raise a family, and you do all you can 
to put away so that those last years you could pay for all your procedures and your surgeries. And then you get to a point where you can't really do much and you just go, what's the point? If that's the story and it ends there, we ought to be pitied. And if this is your best life now, like there's some people that write these books out there, your best life now, then, then you must be going to hell. If this is your best, right? But if God doesn't have something so far richer and better and more qualitative in store, then we've been duped. Hey, kiddo, we walk by faith. You could read all the evidence that demands a verdict you want. You could look at all the Elba tablets and all the bibliographical evidence and all the Dead Sea Scrolls, but guess what? God says you can't please me without faith. So when people say to you, prove it, you say, disprove it. Don't let them put you on the witness stand. You hear? I just uh, got a text from my pastor friend. He says, you're not preaching today, are you? And I was like, then who is? Are you coming? He's like, you sent me that picture. I said, it's covered up. He said, you need more grace. I said, I need more nose. <laughs> if that's part of the grace plan, hallelujah. And then when I was there, I was like, just for the record, what's this? He goes, oh, that's skin cancer. I said, do I stay out of the sun? He said, you lifeguarded your whole life. You lived on the beach. It's done. He said, it's just going to pop up and pop up and pop up. When it's all said and done, I'm going to pop up. <laughs> Father, thank you for being a great God and a great Father. Thank you for always being there, even at times we don't see it. Like my dad, when I played hide and go seek, he always hid behind the drapes, but he always stuck out his feet because he wanted me to find him. Sometimes he's not so obvious, but he's sticking out his feet under the drapes. So Father, be blessed today. Receive our praise. We give it with delight. And it's always in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.